Hey, do you like scalloped potatoes? Or how about pot pie? Well, have I got a treat for you. Today we are making a torte aux pommes de terre. It's a potato pie from France, and it might just be the pinnacle of all comfort foods. And Keith's here, he's gonna show us how to make this incredible dish at home. It's great. <laughs> it's really, really decadent, and like you say, it's comfort food at its finest. And what it consists of are thinly sliced potatoes and onions that are tossed with heavy cream or mm. creme fraiche, and they're baked in a double crust pastry shell. So we are gonna start with a crust today. Okay. I'm going to start by grating some butter. I'm gonna grate four tablespoons of this butter. I've left the paper on a stick of butter so I can just kind of measure four tablespoons from the end and also so I don't grate my fingers <laughs> on the grater. So I just have a box grater here. And that butter is very cold. You can't grate warm butter, it's not fun. No. So I'm just gonna put this into a bowl. I wanna make sure that this is really, really cold when it goes into the dough. So I'm gonna put it in the freezer and we're gonna leave it there until it's time to use it later. Okay. Okay, the butter is safely in the freezer and we can start to put the dough together. So I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour in here and I'm gonna add a teaspoon of table salt and I just wanna pulse this really quickly to work that salt into the flour. Okay. Now I'm gonna take all of our butter, 16 tablespoons that's been cut into half inch pieces. And this butter is very cold as well. It is cold, yep. So I'm gonna let this run for 40 to 50 seconds. And what we're looking for is the butter is gonna fully incorporate into that flour and it's gonna look kind of like a cookie dough. Okay. It's been about 45 seconds and you can see that we've worked that butter into the flour completely. So I'm just gonna break this into large chunks, about two inch pieces, just redistribute it around the blade. Now for the second part, I'm gonna add one cup of all-purpose flour to this. And now this flour, when it's mixed with water later on, that's gonna provide the structure for the dough. So this is gonna be super tender, but the flour and the water mixed together will create gluten and make the structure that we need. Now I don't wanna work this too far into the dough. I just want four or five quick pulses just to break up large butter pieces and get the flour mixed together. Okay, it's great. So we have some larger pieces in here and some smaller pieces, but that's okay. We wanna make sure that we leave some flour unmixed. Take this, transfer it over to our bowl. Now you can kind of look in here and see I have some larger pieces like this. I can make sure I break those up. We do want to make sure that we leave enough unmixed flour in there to create structure. Okay. So I'm going to go get our grated butter and we'll mix that in next. Sounds good. Okay, so I'll just toss this around, making sure to separate those pieces of flour, breaking up any really large chunks of that flour dough. We're going to add a half cup of ice water in total but I'm gonna do it in two batches to make sure that we get that water really well incorporated in there. So I'm gonna start with a quarter cup. Thank you. <laughs> you and bet. I'm just gonna mix this around, kind of push it against the side, make sure that I'm getting all that dry flour off the bottom there. You're just looking for even hydration after the second batch, right? Exactly, yep. Yeah. We want that flour that's not coated with fat to absorb all this liquid. This is our second quarter cup. I'm just gonna add this to the dough. This is our final addition of water. You can start to see that it looks really wet. It looks like you've made a mistake at this point. Yes. But trust the process, <laughs> it really will work. Fold it over, smear it, fold. This looks great. It looks wet right now, but it will dry as it sits. So I'm just gonna divide this in half with my spatula. And if I can ask you to bring a piece of plastic wrap over here, I'm gonna put half of it here now. There's some ways to shape this to create no fissures around the side. You really wanna bring the sides of the plastic wrap up and kind of smush it down as you're bringing it up tightly. And you're wanting to get it nice and compact because later on when you roll it out, if there's a small crack or fissure in there, it turns into a big fault line. And you can't come back from that. So we wanna make sure that we have a fissure-free exterior right now. I'm just gonna finish pulling up the edges here, making sure that we don't have any fissures. Tuck that in, press this down into a five inch circle. And you can feel this dough right now is quite soft, but it will hydrate as it sits. So I'm gonna shape the rest of our dough into another five inch circle. And I'm gonna put those in the refrigerator after that for at least two hours and up to two days. Okay. On to the filling. 
Now, when we tried this, we found some problems with the filling. Most recipes are putting raw potatoes and onions into the crust and baking it, and then you finish it with a little bit of cream towards the end of baking. Well, we found that to be really inconsistent. Sometimes the potatoes didn't soften, the onions didn't soften, or you had too much cream or mm. too little cream. So I have a couple tricks that we're gonna use to get the perfect texture of this filling. Okay. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one onion, take the root end out, we're gonna slice this up. I'm gonna take these onions, put it into a bowl, and I'm gonna take one and a half teaspoons of table salt. I'm gonna to toss that with the onions. The salt's gonna take the moisture out of these onions and soften them. And so by the time we put them in the filling, they'll already be pre-softened. Okay. You get this really sweet, mm. subtle onion flavor in the background rather than the kind of a cooked onion flavor. Gotcha. It's really nice. So really toss these well. I'm just gonna let these soften over here while I prepare our potatoes. Okay. Now I have two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes cut into eighth inch slices. We really like Yukon Gold potatoes here. They're creamy, they're right. buttery, they make a really nice filling. Now, we're gonna cook our potatoes just a little bit before they go into the filling. That way we can ensure that they're properly cooked when they come out. So I have four quarts of water that are boiling over there. Now I'm just gonna slide these into the water and I'm gonna also add a half teaspoon of baking soda. Stir that in. Now, that baking soda is gonna start to break down the exterior of those slices of potatoes so they release their starches. And you can see when we mix it with the cream, those starches will come out and thicken it and make this nice creamy cohesive sauce that will coat those potatoes. So we're gonna bring that up to a boil and cook it for one minute. We're really not looking to cook the potatoes too, too much. We just wanna give them a little bit of a head start. Okay, the potatoes have been boiling for a minute. It's time to drain. Put the potatoes back into the pot, and now I'm going to add our cream. So I have one and a quarter cups of cream. There's the cream. There's the cream. I have three cloves of minced garlic, half teaspoon of pepper, quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Mm. And now we're gonna add our softened onions and the juices. We wanna make sure that we capture all these juices because that is where the salt is. So I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer over high heat. Stir this and cook this for about five minutes and you can see that the starches are gonna come out of those potatoes and thicken that cream. Mm. It's gonna have this nice glossy coating on those potatoes. It's gonna look fantastic. Okay, it's been five minutes. You can see that the cream is thickened. Those starches have come out of the potato and have coated these potatoes super nicely. Gorgeous. <laughs> It will continue to cook and reduce and thicken when it gets into the pie. So I'm just gonna shut this off and we're gonna let that sit for at least 30 minutes and cool. We don't wanna put that into a pie crust right now because that would melt it and make a mess. So at least 30 minutes and up to two hours. And while that is happening, we can roll out our pie dough. Okay, it's been two hours and all that flour has hydrated and now it's time to roll out the dough. So I've already floured the counter really well. This is a fairly moist dough and it's okay to flour the counter really well. I'll just flour the top of it. So I've had these out for about 10 minutes softening to make it a little easier to work with. Okay. I like to start getting this initial five inch down to nine inches, pressing from the center out, kind of turn it so that I'm only really rolling in one direction. Once it rolls out to a larger circle, it's a little bit more difficult to roll, but in the initial stages, I like to keep turning it. What's nice, you can see those pockets of butter in the dough itself. And as the dough bakes and it melts, the little pockets of butter are going to melt, puff up, release some steam, and you get a nice flaky crust. Okay, now that I have it at this point, I really don't wanna mess with it too, too much. So I'm just kind of taking it from the center, rolling out, backwards, this way. Looking for a 12 inch circle. I think that is good. Now I just want to do one last turn. I want to make sure that I get any heavy pockets of flour off the back side here. I have a nine inch pie plate and just roll it out like that. That's okay, not a big deal. That's a great thing about this pie dough. If you don't get it perfectly centered, you can pick it up, and work it right in there, just like that. Gorgeous. So I'm just gonna take this and lift it up and kind of push it into the corners, make sure that it's well worked into the corners there. Okay, so I'm gonna roll out the second dough to a 12 inch circle, just like this one, but I'm gonna put that on a parchment lined rim baking sheet. They're both gonna go in the refrigerator for half an hour. Okay. It's time to put this together. So we have our cool potato mixture over here. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of parsley. Okay, that looks mm. great. I'm just gonna put this into our pie crust. 
scrape out all that creamy goodness. I'm going to flatten this out, make sure that we don't have any air pockets in here. Okay, now for our top crust. I'm going to take a little pastry tip here. You can use a paring knife. I'm just going to put a half inch circle in there, and that's going to allow any steam to come out. Very clever. Like that. And I just want to go around and check to make sure that I don't have too much excess dough around the edges here. I'm pinching the bottom to the top, and if I feel like if I have a little bit more than a finger's width, I'll take a little bit of that off, because if you have too much dough on the edges, it's hard to cook through and you have this big doughy mass. Okay, so now I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it underneath itself to create that nice lip, and I just fold it back until I can start to see the lip of the pie plate, right? just like that. You want to tuck it down into it to kind of seal it, because if you don't, then you'll have potato juices coming out the edges. And cream. Okay, so now for the crimping. So I usually do this in three passes. I make kind of a rough crimp around the edges, and then I come back and clean it up a little bit. Now, if your fingers start to stick and that dough heats up a little bit, you can take a little flour, sprinkle it on your fingers, and continue to go. Now, two more passes, one on the outside, one on the inside. I'm actually really digging the amount of detail that you're putting into it. Pies are a gift. It's wrapped. <laughs> it should look beautiful. Again, always going back to that flour so your fingers don't stick. Okay, now for the outside part here. Ah, that's when it's all coming together. Okay, beautifully crimped. One last thing before we bake it. I just have an egg wash here. And this is going to help it brown and it's going to have a nice sheen. And what do you use for your egg wash? Eggs. Nice. I'm just going to get into the crimps here with this brush and get the outside portion of the crimps. So that looks perfect. Now it's time to bake. So we're going to start at a high temperature here. We want to get all of those insides up to temperature quickly. So we're going to start at 450 for 18 to 20 minutes. And what we're looking for is the top will just start to get golden brown. Okay. It's great. So this has been about 18 minutes and you can start to see it's getting some golden brown color in here. So I'm going to push it back in. Now we want to reduce the oven temperature. We've gotten that filling warm, we just want to finish baking it. I'm going to reduce it down to 325. We're going to let this finish baking 30 to 40 minutes until it's deep golden brown. Now if we find that it's getting too dark, especially along the crimps, we can go in there and add a foil shield to protect that. You remember how I talked about the foil shield around here? I did go in because I found it was getting a little bit too dark just to put this foil on to make sure that our crust didn't over brown. Mm. One last thing, I just want to take a paring knife, make sure the potatoes are completely tender, and they are. It looks great, doesn't it? It looks outstanding. Okay, so we're going to let this cool. If we slice this right now, the potatoes are going to go all over the place. So right. we're going to let this sit for at least 30 minutes before we cut into it. Okay. It has been 30 minutes and it's now time to cut this masterpiece. Use the tip of the knife and I like to score through the crust first rather than trying to go all the way down <laughs> through the whole thing. And the beauty of this pie is that you can cool it down fully and eat it chilled, warm, room temperature. It can be eaten many ways. The small offset spatula works really well here. Look at that top pie crust. It's flaking almost as if it was puff pastry, but it's so much sturdier. Oh, <gasps> beautiful. It is a gift. Mm -hmm. See? That looks lovely, doesn't it? This is everything in a pie shell. Potatoes, onions, you can smell it all. And you notice that all that cream is held in place mm. by the starch from the potatoes. It's not all running out. That's dirty. That's what that <laughs> is. It is so good. The potatoes are creamy, the cream is creamy, the onions are perfectly soft. And the pastry, it's perfect. It's holding up to the fillings within, but it's buttery, it's flaky. This is potato heaven. It is potato heaven. Yeah. As if I couldn't love potatoes anymore, and you baked them in a pie. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. And if you want to make this stupendous potato dish at home, make a sturdy but flaky all-butter pastry, Pre-cook the potatoes with a little baking soda and pour in the cream before assembling the tort. So from America's Test Kitchen, the decadent and supremely satisfying tort of pomme de terre. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? 
Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.